All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming up on our last TED Style speaker, and we've decided um, to take ourselves out of our country and into a country where running campaigns is way more challenging than it is here. So we let's welcome to the stage Elisa Totaro. Okay, so let's start by talking a little bit about the Venezuelan regime. For those of you who don't know the Venezuelan regime, it's a dictatorship that has oppressed the Venezuelan people for almost 20 years now. It's a regime that harasses, that persecutes, that imprisons and even kills those who oppose them. It's a regime that have, has closed hundreds of media outlets and that has people scavenging for food on the trash it's a regime that has people living in food shortages with a crisis of electricity and water, and where nobody gets medical attention in the hospitals because there's no medical supplies and no medicines. And a regime that is directly responsible for the assassination of 159 people during the protests last year that I'm sure everybody here was aware of. So, Yes, it looks like an unbeatable Goliath, right, this regime? What do you think? Okay. We feel the same way, but we, and when I say we, I mean everybody that's working towards achieving change in Venezuela, we have won some battles. I know it's hard to believe, but we have won some battles, and we have lost others. But the truth is that the fight isn't over yet. And what we have done is that we have fought this Goliath with one secret weapon which is creativity. And you might wonder what I mean by creativity. Well, for me, creativity is just the ability to solve problems, to overcome obstacles, and reach a goal that at first seemed unattainable. For example, in Venezuela, we have a lot of censorship. And sometimes when we try to get our message in traditional media, we have to find creative ways to get the message across. Sometimes we have even tricked TV stations and newspapers into believing they were showing a safe message. For example, one time we were doing a um, campaign for Leopoldo Lopez, who is Venezuela's most prominent political prisoner and one of um, the opposition's leader in Venezuela. And we knew that TV stations weren't allowed to show his image, his voice, and even his footage. So what we did is we created a series of TV spots that showcased messages written and signed by Leopoldo that were received by the main characters of the spots and that generated a good reaction. And in this way, we managed to bypass the censorship that was imposed in the TV stations and we managed to get Leopoldo into people's minds because as you know, well, the internet helps a lot but it doesn't reach everybody as TV does. In the, in the case of Venezuela, specifically. So as you can see, it's pretty tough to do political advertising in Venezuela. But as you say here, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And Venezuelans are very resilient, maybe too resilient. And we have taken the streets many, many times in the past 18 years, demanding for change. But the thing is that each year, the burden has grown heavier and the crisis has deepened. So it's harder and harder every time to keep people motivated, to keep people organized, centered, engaged. And this is where creativity comes in handy too. For example, last year, um, I'm sure you heard of it, uh, saw it in the news, uh, we had four months of continuous protests on the street. And what we did is we created a Facebook page called Venezuela Protesta, Venezuela Protests, where we taught people how to protest in a non-violent manner. We taught them how to defend themselves from tear gas bombs, from rubber bullets, how to make, um, how to make a bulletproof vest out of x-ray sheets, how to disable the water cannon, uh, what to do if they got caught by the military forces. And we did a lot of infographics, web flyers, print flyers, animations, and videos such as this.
So we didn't plan for this brave, brave woman to stand in front of an armored vehicle of the security forces. This wasn't planned. But as soon as we saw that footage, we knew we had to use that to get people motivated, to get people to want to protest longer and more. So you see, with this, what I want to say is that creativity is not only creating new, amazing things. It's also taking advantage of situations and elements that are already there and make them serve your purpose. Creativity is certainly a good tool to educate. It's a good tool to motivate and to organize. All these things are relevant when you're trying to defy the status quo of a regime. But the truth is also that when you're fighting a dictatorial regime, resources are scarce. And you get all the, all the doors shut in your face when you're trying to look for funding for campaigns because people are afraid to give money for a campaign that goes against the government, a government that controls everything. So proper funding is really, really hard to come by. So we always find ourselves having to do a lot with little money. And if that isn't a situation where you absolutely have to be creative, then I don't know what is. I wanted to show a stencil graffiti in this part because I believe that um, graffiti is one of the cheapest forms of propaganda and one of the most effective ones too. Nevertheless, when you, when you type the word, the word propaganda on Google, you're probably gonna get this as a result, like a bunch of typical war uh, posters or propaganda posters, classic propaganda. But you see, for me, propaganda is much more than that. Propaganda is the protest graffiti, is the outcry portrayed in a sign, is the, um, it's the declaration of purpose on a flyer. And when you're doing this sort of things where you want to communicate for or against uh, someone or something, or when you want to rally around a cause, you absolutely need to be creative in the origination and the execution of the idea. Uh, going back to the case of Venezuela, uh, it has been difficult to, to keep on finding creative ways to get to people after all these years. And some might say we have received quite a beating in recent years by the government, uh, especially this year with a call to fake elections that are going to be held next month in Venezuela. But this is what we do. We get up, we fight, we find new ways to push through. We find new ways to give hope to Venezuelans that change is possible. And in a nutshell, because I'm almost out of time, um, when you're working against a Goliath, you're gonna need to bypass censorship, work with scarce resources, motivate, educate, and communicate. And what do they have in common? That they need creative thinking in order to be achieved successfully. You need to be creative to bypass the censorship. You need to use creative thinking to work with little money. Really, believe me, it's really hard to work with scarce resources. You need to be creative to keep people motivated after all these years. You cannot say the same message every time, right? Like every year, change, change, change. No, no more change. You've been telling us the same thing for 18 years. People don't believe it anymore. So you have to be creative so that people keep on believing that, that change is actually possible. You have to educate because people have to learn um, how to organize, how to protest in a nonviolent matter, for example. And of course, you have to communicate. And um, I don't want to leave you without saying that creative thinking is best produced when minds and efforts are combined. And this is why, this is why I want to ask you to share your thoughts and your ideas on how to battle a dictatorship. Share them with me and with all the Venezuelans that are trying to find new ways to bring about change in our country. And we won't give up, so don't give up on us. Thank you. All right, friends, that's the end of the 2018 TED Style Talks. Let's give one more round of applause for all our great speakers. 
We hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did in finding these awesome leaders in our industry. So we hope you have, from the, all the co-chairs to you guys, we hope you have an amazing conference. And uh, we'll see you around the sessions. Thanks.